Hey Sam. Yes, Dad. Is your school assignment done? It's going on. What's it about? It's mathematics, Dad. Number system. It's almost complete. Finally, done with all my school assignments. Ha. Ah, I'm just counting the number of days before we go on vacation next summer. Numbers and counting, huh? Do you know numbers are heart and soul of mathematics? It's all about numbers, you see. Uh, well, not exactly. Mathematics is also about symbols, operators, equations, shapes, formulae, algorithms, and whatnot. But without numbers, mathematics wouldn't exist. Have you ever wondered, son, how man in prehistoric times used numbers for counting? But what was there to count in those times? Ah, uh, well, let me see. There were animals he killed and ate days and nights. Mm, more animals he killed and ate. But that's not important. What's important is that in those times, man used his fingers for counting or made markings on bones. But he could only go up to ten on his hands or up to a certain limit using the bones. For larger numbers, there were no enough fingers to use. So he devised figures or symbols representing numbers and created groups of symbols for when there was a lot to count. As man evolved, uh, well that's not exactly how he evolved, but you get the general idea, right? As he evolved, many languages developed too and numbers were denoted in newer and different ways across the world. These symbols, figures or names for numbers are called numerals and we use these numerals for different purposes. For example, the numeral 3 here can be used as a count, a label, a sequence, a measurement, a phone number, etc. That was not a phone number, Dad. Yes, yes, I know. So because we have 10 fingers, it seems man eventually settled for 10 numerals or digits for our number system. These are all single digits and are hence called ones. Let's count them. We start with 1 as 0 means nothing. When we reach the number 9, we start over with 1 again. But just so that we don't confuse it with the digit 1 we used above, we move this digit 1 aside and keep the space blank. Blank or nothing means 0 as you know. So the digit 0 moves here. So we now have a combination of digits that represent the number 10. This place is hence called tens. We go on and on and on till we reach the number 99. As you can see, we cannot use any two digit combination for the next number without repeating ourselves. So that's when we place the digit 1 further aside and fill the blank space with a 0. This number is 100 and the new place is hence called hundreds. And that's how it keeps going for larger and larger numbers. Let's take a numeral 7. As a single digit, its value is, well of course, 7. This is its face value. When we place this 7 in a larger number, say 4672, its value is determined by the place it is at, in this case 70. This is called its place value. Now let's look at different types of numbers with the help of some examples. Let's count the trees on the beach. Naturally, we start with 1, followed by 2, and so on. Such numbers are called natural numbers. Now let's count the number of small huts on the beach. Obviously, there are none. So which number would represent this condition? Right, we add a 0 to the natural numbers. This set is called whole numbers. Now let's measure the height of the ship. It's 6 meters above sea level and there are 2 meters below sea level as well. We show them as negative numbers. 
These type of numbers are called integers. Now let's try to find out how tall this boy on the beach is. His height is between 1 meter and 2 meters, shown as a fraction 1 and a half or a decimal 1.5 meters. A set of integers along with all numbers that can be denoted by a fraction or a decimal is called real numbers. Great! It was fun! I only wish I had done my number systems assignment after your coaching. Thanks.